Hi, my name is Ann Wold. I'm a pediatric physical therapist at Emerge Pediatric Therapy, and today we are going to be discussing some considerations for mobility for those with disabilities. We are going to be discussing mostly children with disabilities, but many of these constructs can be related to adults as well. Um, we're going to go through some tips for transitions and transfers, but we're also going to just talk about some general considerations to keep in mind if you are a caregiver, a parent, maybe a teacher, an aide um, that works with children with disabilities. So later in the video, you'll see some transitions and we'll talk through some tips and tricks for those, but let's get started with some general considerations if you are working with a child that has disabilities. So the number one consideration that you should remember at all times is that a device, a walker, a rollator, um, crutches, a wheelchair, those are an extension of that person's body. So we don't ever touch or move that equipment without the consent of the person that uses that equipment. Um, this is particularly important if you are moving their equipment out of reach, um, they should okay that. So in this video, you'll see that I'm working with a child that has um, a disability. I help her move to and from her chair when she comes into our clinic. So it is important that before I move her chair away from our table where we're doing our work, that I check in with her, ask, hey, is it okay if I move your chair now? I'm gonna put it over here. Um, because it is an extension of her body and it is the way that she is mobile, she, it's important that she knows where I'm gonna put her chair. And it's also important that she tells me, yes, that's okay. The same thing goes for children that you might be pushing in a wheelchair. So checking in with them before assuming that they want to be pushed, um, confirming, yes, they're okay. They would like to be pushed um, versus do they want to independently push themselves? So those are our first consideration. Our next consideration is assuming general competence. So we assume that whatever child we are talking to understands that we are asking them these questions. Regardless of what response they give us, we assume that they are understanding our information. So equally important for us to loop them in on the conversation of mobility. So if we are going to move them from you know, one service to another service, we need to tell them that first. So it's checking in with them first. Okay, we're gonna get ready to move from you know, the mat to the chair. Are you ready? I'm not always looking for a response, but I am going to continue to tell them and let them know when we're moving. I think that's a pretty significant piece of importance in, this, in considering that we are about to move their body. Uh, the next thing to consider, and this is particularly important if you are a kind of a long-term caregiver for a child, is that you want to make sure that your body is also prepared for transfers and transitions. So giving yourself enough time to do them, making sure that the person that is about to us get your assistance for being moved is also aware that we need to take our time. Um, if it's a situation where it feels like it needs to be rushed, kind of maintaining that boundary of taking your time with transfers because your body mechanics are also very important. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about body mechanics as we go through some of the transfers that we're going to do in this video, but it's absolutely important that your body is safe as well. So making sure that the safety of the person being moved is upheld and also the safety of the person doing the moving. As we move into our next part, we are going to look at some transfers. So the first one that we're going to look at is a sit to stand. Some clients with disabilities, they may only need handheld assist um, to safely get them up into a standing position. If you're working with someone that needs more assistance than that, then the way that you would provide that is by kind of coming in very close, keeping their body mass close to your body mass. That way you are able to really kind of give them a really big hug. Keeping them closer to your body also reduces the amount of force, force through your joints as the caregiver. So you would be pulling them in tight. You can use your knees to block their knees. That also counterweights kind of gives you some counter pressure there so that you are able to more easily get them to standing and you know that their legs aren't gonna buckle underneath. If we are in a position where we're going to be doing a dependent transfer from any surface to another surface, something like a lift, equally as important there to be making sure that you're bringing them in very close, kind of giving them a big deep hug and that you're getting down into that low deep squat so that then you can kind of lift with your legs and transfer them into the chair. You can see in the video that I was doing both of those transitions with my friend. 
making sure that my body mechanics look good when I'm doing that and also making sure that I prep her are two of the biggest steps in making sure that transitions and transfers can be completed safely and efficiently and that both of our bodies are kind of considered for body mechanics, making sure that we're both safe, making sure that we're both kind of willing participants in that transfer. If you are a caregiver to someone that has disabilities, if you are a person with disabilities, we would love to hear feedback from you on your best tips and tricks for movement. Um, please leave us a comment. If you are a parent that has a young child that is wondering, man, how am I gonna do these transfers as they get bigger and older? We would love to hear from you as well. I hope you learned something from this video. Um, thank you for watching. Have a great day.